Dowling Parish, Venti Scuba, I hope you like fish because we're going spear fishing today. <laughs> I just want to show you some interesting stuff. I have a very large collection of uh, spear guns and uh, I'm uh, slowly taking pictures of them all and cataloging them all. I'm going to put those pictures on the internet. I have a friend actually, uh, a chap anyway, in um, Argentina who's big into vintage spear guns and he wants to buy some and I'm going to send them up, put them on eBay and so on. So if you have an interest in spear guns, let me know. But today I want to show you some interesting ones, just a couple. And uh, particularly I want to show you some contrasts, okay? So we're going to start out with this little gun here, beautiful little gun. This is called the uh, Atom, Atom, which I mean, I, I guess it means small, huh? When this gun was made in the 60s, Atom uh, was, a, was a fairly new word. And, uh, and, and so U.S. divers, Aqualung, uh, they called this nice light little gun, I don't think it weighs two pounds, the Atom. Pretty straightforward gun, aluminum tube, plastic body, has a safety on it. Put the spear in, hook the, uh, pull the, 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 uh, the sling back, hook it into the hook, pull the trigger, spear comes out, the fish is dead, go get some sandwiches. So pretty straightforward, very, very light, very small, and so on. Now, there were bigger guns. This is a very small gun. I have smaller, yeah, believe it or not, but I have smaller guns. But this is a bigger gun. This is made by Scuba Pro. A little later, probably the late 60s, early 70s, Scuba Pro, uh, beautiful gun as well. Uh, some unique things about this gun, very long aluminum tube. This simply made it easier to load because you could put this rubber end onto your, onto your uh, waist and your groin and it made it easier to load, which is probably worthwhile for this gun because this gun would use up to three slings. Uh-huh, yeah, you see there's a big opening here for the different rubber slings to fit in. And the slings were long on this, a lot of power. And you see there's three hooks here, three hooks. So you'd load one and load two. Now, oh, it's a big fish. Better load three. Exactly, you load three, pull the trigger, and the spear shoots out, and hopefully you get a nice big fish. So the reason I wanted to show you these two is not only to show you the two different guns and some differences, but also the relative sizes. The, 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 uh, the shaft on the Scuba Pro gun probably weighs as much as the Atom. Right? Okay, so, so these are pretty neat, but they're not very sophisticated. I'm going to keep the Atom out here in front because it's a really pretty little gun, and I want to show uh, the contrast between the Atom and some of these other guns. What do you think? Okay, so here's, here's another gun. I can't get this whole gun into the camera, but I just want to do some just for fun. Let's see what happens here. One, two, oh, no, it's not three. I thought it was more than two, but it's just two times as long as the uh, cute little Atom. Uh, but uh, but it's a beautiful gun. I mean, look at it. Look at the finish on it. Let's see one of those brand new metallic red Ford Focuses or something that you see. Beautiful gun. Old. This is an old gun. Uh, CO2. Pelletier. Pelletier. CO2. Pelletier. Pelletier. From Paris. CO2. Pelletier. Paris. I don't know if that means it's made in Paris or the guy's name is Paris. But there's a pretty neat gun. And you see that it's, it's very, very simple, very clean, very clean. Beautiful aluminum forged uh, uh, handle and, and, uh, uh, and uh, breech area here. Long steel tube on it and, and a funny mechanism down here at the end. And no slings. What's with that? Well, we need to explain how this particular gun works. And it's fairly neat. So what you do is <clears throat> you simply... Remove this end, it unscrews. The end of this end, you fit a large CO2 cartridge. That's right, this is a CO2 Peltier from Paris. So you put your big cartridge in there. And then when you get it in there, you go like this, and that breaks open the CO2 cartridge. So now this is under pressure. And then there's a safety on the side here. You let the safety off, and you pull the trigger, and the spear flies out. What spear? What spear? Well, the spear is in here, watch. I'm wondering at nine foot. Scene. Now, did you hear that little at the very end? That's because this spear has two O rings on it. So, very, very smooth, close fitting shaft. There's a notch in the end of the spear. That's where the firing mechanism hooks on holes onto it until you pull the trigger. And otherwise, this shaft is a big, long, I mean, look at it long. The shaft is almost twice as long as the, uh, as the atom. And the shaft is long and straight and smooth, and you fit it down in there. And it's a friction fit, so it doesn't fall. You have to push it in. It's a nice, snug, beautiful, smooth fit. 
push it down in, put on a spear tip, beautiful spear tip, and now what happens when you pull the trigger, the gas under pressure from the CO2 cartridge floods into the barrel, and that's a bit like a cannon, be like a bullet. Big explosion of gas in there, and that sealed spear comes flying out at high speed. And you get your fish. And then because it's so terribly, beautifully long, it's very easy to aim with this gun. You get a really good shot with it. So there's an example of a much more sophisticated, much larger, still a very slick gun. Beautiful finish on it, almost brand new. I doubt very much that this gun has been used a great deal. A couple of marks on it, but not very many. Beautiful gun. CO2 Peltier from Paris, or Peltier Paris. Okay, I got more. How's that for a beautiful gun? Look at that. What a gorgeous color. Looks like some of the modern cars, you know, they didn't have these colors in spear guns in the 60s and 70s. They're all black or silver. Beautiful, beautiful gun. Now, and this is a gas, uh, a gas power gun. Now, this particular gun is unique because this is, you know, this gun never ever sold. This was never ever sold. How did I get it? This was a prototype. This, this company, Prototipo from Italy, made this particular gun in, uh, in February of 1973 as a prototype. They were testing several things. They were testing a whole new safety gas mechanism and they were also testing the seal of the shaft gas power gun so the shaft is sealed into the barrel and when you squeeze the trigger you release the gas and the gas pressure built up and forced the spear out so they were making some changes on all of that beautiful molded aluminum handle on here excellent nicely nicely finished knurls and everything the whole mechanism is just gorgeous and uh, and uh, the shaft itself was a fairly big shaft it had to be fairly big because <clears throat> it had on the end o-ring seals to keep it sealed in the barrel until the gas pressure was released and forced that big spear to come flying out of there so and this is a prototypo uh february of uh, 1973 mod one so this is model one or modification one i think mod one beautiful gun italy and the only one if you want it call me <laughs> it's the only one. All right. Should we go to the other one, Kevin, right away? Sure. Right here behind that one, I have this gun. Looks very similar, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, they painted the aluminum. They painted the blue. And this is a little more compact, a little cleaner looking. Not as many, you know, the gas cartridge goes on there. You fire the gas cartridge. This looks to be a little more typical. This is the Prototipo in February of 74, so a year later, Mod 2. So this is an improved model. Again, this was sent to a friend of mine for testing, and unfortunately, for various reasons which aren't important, he was not able to take them out and test them, and um, I have them. When you pull it out, you'll notice that the shaft is hollow. Yes, so with the previous shafts that we've seen for gas power guns, and including this prototype Mod 1, the shaft had, it was solid, and it had O-rings around the outside, and it went down and sealed in the barrel. This one is a little bit different. The shaft is hollow, has no O-rings on the outside. But if you're able to look down inside the barrel, you see that there's another shaft in there with a hole in the end of it, and I can see some O-rings around it. What happens with this one? It's kind of interesting. This shaft goes over top of that inside shaft, over top of the interior shaft, and now it's O-ring sealed on that inside shaft. It's not O-ring sealed in the barrel. Hear it? So it's loose in the barrel, but it's sitting over as an interior shaft. So almost like two shafts on this. Well, I can see why. That would give a great sealing. What wonderful seal on there. So now when you pull the trigger and release the gas, the gas would shoot up to the end of the inside shaft, and then the O-ring seal, the gas would then go onto the spear <laughs> is that clear and the spear would come flying off the inside shaft be more accurate and be more power less loss of gas as well so maybe this was the gun that they were going to bring into production so another beautiful gun i have one more to show you and that's it for today on my exciting spear guns okay guys last one today Woohoo! boy this is the uh the loaded model <laughs> it's a sport model it's got everything what do you want in your spear gun, sir? Everything. Okay, this is what you get. Well, actually it doesn't. This is actually a pretty <clears throat> pretty standard, pretty uh, looking gun. It's a pretty standard gun. It doesn't standard looking. 
pretty standard spear gun. It's a pressure gun again, but unlike some of the previous ones, the three previous ones we've shown you, <clears throat> this one does not use a cartridge. It doesn't use a CO2 cartridge. This one uses compressed air. Right here. Compressed air comes from the pump. Uh -huh. Now you have probably seen, certainly you spear fishermen guys, have seen compressed air guns. And, and uh, most of the modern guns today that are, that are pneumatic, we call them, <clears throat> use compressed air, pardon me. What you do is before you go spear fishing, you put the pump into the end of it, it seals and you pump it up so you get a chamber of compressed air. Okay, And then <clears throat> when you want to fire the gun, you put your shaft in and the shaft hits the piston, pushes the piston down to here, it locks it in place. So now all the compressed air is in there under a great deal of pressure, the piston is pushed down against that, so the pistons are under a great deal of pressure, it wants to shoot out. It's not easy to get it down there, it takes hard, yeah, click, you get it in place, Woo. Then you put the shaft in on top of the piston, well, actually, that comes with it. But anyway, and then when you squeeze the trigger, what happens is you just release that shaft that you just pushed down with the piston, and the piston slams up, and the spear takes off. With this particular one, the pump is on the gun. Now, I can't be exactly sure. I'm not exactly. This is made by Nemrod. It's the, uh, uh, sec, you know, Crucero series, C-R-U-C-E-R-O, Crucero series made by a Nemrod, sold by Seamless in North America, and you pump this up, pneumatic gun, big fish, and you get it pumped up, so you get lots of air pressure in there, and you got your shaft in, you put your shaft in again, it's your pneumatically sealed shaft, and then when you're ready to shoot, you let the safety off, and you squeeze the trigger, and the shaft goes flying out. Now this also has the additional optional line reel okay so when the shaft goes out the line shoots up like this and stays with the spear lots of line on there so if you shoot a big fish you can fish it <laughs> actually it wasn't that uncommon if it was a big fish uh, you, you didn't want to lose the spear the fish would normally go down and hide in a coral somewhere and you have, sometimes you had to go and get a breath of air and then dive back down and get a hold of this and work it it actually has a reel on there you don't reel it in like you reel in a, on a fishing line but it's, it, it to tire the fish out until finally you can recover the fish but there you go there's a crazy looking one nemrod uh, crucero series uh, made in spain probably from the uh, mid to late 70s with all the options on it. Special edition. Anyway, there you go, guys. Two or three uh, pretty interesting spear guns, I think interesting, from my collection. That will be going on sale shortly. Uh, and, and if you are interested, get in touch with me. But I hope you enjoyed that. It's a vintage scuba uh, diver session. All right, I'm going to talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Let's go fishing.